Oh, hello, hello, hello. Episode 22. Uh, this is going to be a good episode, actually. As a matter of fact, um, I have a friend of mine whose name is Jacob. He is coming on, and he's going to be, I don't know what that is, and he's going to be uh, talking about uh, the language of Aramaic, which is absolutely super cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Aramaic was the, the, the precipice of Judaism's uh, language of uh, what we know of Hebrew as today. I'm sure I'm going to find out much more and everything else here in a moment. Uh, I'm waiting for Jacob to show up live. As soon as he does, he comes in. I will tag him. We will start to, uh, and there he is. Oh, here he is. I'm bringing him on to the podcast. I am so sorry. Folks, this is going to be such a great episode. I know it already. Uh, any moment now, he'll be added in. Oh, there he is. Here he is. Jacob. Hey. Oh, yeah. we got you. Oh, dude, we've met before. You look super familiar, man. I don't know. Yeah, but you look super familiar. Oh, Did you? Say, were you in so. Israel? Were you in Israel when Isaac was in Israel? I was there, yeah, at a point there, absolutely. You were there. So was well. I. Oh, you wow. and I met, dude. Yeah, for sure. And when I see a face, I don't forget them. So, like, yeah, yeah, man, without a oh, doubt. Cool. We, at least for, like, a, a brief second, we hung out, for sure. That's amazing, definitely. And, and you know, the trippy thought, maybe in past lives that people are into that kind of thing. Who knows? I'm not personally, but, you know, they say, they say those kinds of things, so. So, so Jacob, um, for those of you who are here, who are watching now or watching later, um, I gave a small brief description, which was probably completely wrong, but I said that your name is Jacob, you study the, the language of Aramaic, and for those who don't know, Aramaic is the precipice of what we know of today as Judaism, or Hebrew, uh, as the letters of Hebrew. Right, exactly. Uh, Aramaic is basically... Um... <laughs> The, the, the initial thing that I would that I would have wanted to say as well is that initially the beginner, the Aramaic kind of is step two of like the Avahad process, but we can definitely get into that in a moment. And the step one is the actual symbols that you could even see behind me, like actually studying the uh, pictorial shapes because it, it's meant for kids, it's meant for beginners, and it, and it's literally the the guide to life, basically. Like if someone doesn't have time to learn the whole system of what's revealed at Sinai, the Torah, all these languages and secrets, everything, God condensed it all firstly into the symbols and then spoke the symbols and wove together reality. So it's like, if you want to understand everything, you study this first. But Aramaic in, of its, in and of itself, what we've discovered is that it's in the language of the sages, they say that Aramaic is basically biblical Hebrew that is uh, uh, wishy-washy, they say, literally, meshubash, it's an onomatopoeia. It's like mispronouncing Hebrew in such a way that it's almost people think it's this whole other language, and there's additional um, symbol flips. Like once we understand uh, the symbols and how the sages pair them, like for example, samech and ayin, they always go together. So for example, if the word of the Torah has a Sameth, the Aramaic is going to have an Ayin. If the word in the Torah has an Ayin, the, the Targum, the Aramaic word, is going to have a Sameth. So there's all these little flips and tricks and things like that. But Aramaic is very accessible, and that's a, a huge part of what we're trying to do also, and make it more accessible to people, because the secrets are in Aramaic. They're not meant to be secrets, because no one understands, or many people think they don't understand or can't understand it. But really, when they study the Aramaic, they'll see and uh, get the answers that they're looking for and the beauty kind of that's been hidden away for all these years. So definitely. Wow, uh, very intense. So when you get into, uh, you, you're talking about, and I may be m messing things up here, but you're talking about taking like an olive and actually flipping an olive and looking at an olive on the other, the mirror image of it, is it what you're saying? And that there's oh. some kind of, oh, okay, no, go ahead. Yeah, no, there's, there's definitely that that is certainly a level and and actually because if it does look mirrored right now because i am using the the front cam but you could almost see like arabic it starts to look like arabic a little and all these other symbols but uh the first step that might be a level for sure because the shapes they tell everything every nuance of the shapes teaches a story but basically i could do a quick walkthrough if i may of 
of the symbols and, yeah, and uh, any questions please and then we could go in depth and whatever else you'd like you know i am so stoked on this episode right now you have yeah, no yeah. idea <laughs> yeah and, I, I, and I, 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 too. yeah it's amazing I love, but, I love the fact that this is going to be on the internet forever and that people will get to see this and get to learn aramaic in some way shape or form from this so by all means Right. Teach a lesson, my friend. Teach a lesson. If you want to okay. flip your camera around, right, so that when, yes. when we see it, that people who see it see the actual letters in the right direction. Yeah, forward, absolutely. absolutely, no, that's a great point. Thank you, because you are seeing it, Mayor. I would, I would not have known that. Absolutely, but also no, for the I, Aramaic. Yeah, sorry, what were you about to say? No, 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 no. I'm only excited, but I, I only said the mirror reflection of it because. And this brings me to the point of Mount Sinai. Uh, I, I may be paraphrasing or saying this incorrectly, but the first time that Moses comes down from the mount, he has a set of, uh, and once again, I could be wrong, but a set of, uh, of, of, of stones that were see-through and the letters were spinning. Right. So this is why I only bring out that it, are we by looking at the Aleph and saying this is Aleph? If I flip the Aleph, it, does it also translate to this is the opposite of what Aleph is? And then it, it makes like the entire, you know, language into 44 on some level, right? 44 letters. And then there's the positive attributes and the negative attributes of these letters, of these. I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, uh, and, um, the Aleph bet are used in, in, in different Psalms in the holy acrostic from Aleph till Tav going through every symbol and things like that. And they're also used in like um, Lamentations also follows the Aleph bet, but kind of like the negative flip side of the Aleph bet. So yeah, every Aleph bet, because it, it, it's potential and like everything in this world as uh, Rabbi Zamir Cohen points out, everything is just potential. And so the more it has, the more good and the more not. So the Aleph bet even themselves have potential and you could wield them in different ways. And uh, so for sure they have the good side and the dark side of the, of the kind of symbol. Right, now my next question is, when you say wielding, I, it immediately makes me think of, um, and I don't take this in a negative aspect where I say these next words, uh, it's spell casting. Uh, it's 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 speaking uh, certain letters, certain vowels, certain things in a certain order that will effectively uh, make your communication more or less uh, desirable for those around you. Absolutely, and uh, you you lo you love this thought. I mean, it's shared in the name of Rabbi Arya Kaplan, but it says that uh, the phrase that magicians say when they pretend to create something from nothing, abracadabra, right? You may have already know this, but as they say, it's really Hebrew, or they point out to Aramaic, because again, they're both one and the same essentially, just a little bit more jambled in Aramaic. But it's evra keadabra. I will create as I will speak, you know, or I I will create please as I will speak please. That extra pay at the end so this That's kind so of concept cool. that creating and speech and everything that it's so calculated and and it and it does wield and it's cool that in english you write spelling and it's casting spells and things but we don't cast spells and witchcraft like on people and wish negative stuff like that of course but just the no I think, that, words. Yeah, I, think, definitely. I think that the idea of spell casting has been uh, westernized in a sense where it has become the witches of Eastwick and some crazy woman with a cauldron, you know, yeah. I'm casting spells, you know, with a long nose. And it's, it's and what people don't recognize is that every single day when we speak, yeah. we're casting spells. Like this is you and me talking is a form of spell casting, right? We want to share this idea, this knowledge. And uh, so, Let's let's get in with it because I'm super excited. Definitely. Flip your camera around. Yeah, give me a lesson. Let's go. <laughs> Dang man, right now you got the uh, take off the camera lens here. All right, should I should I keep it straight or, or yeah, flip please, it? Yeah, keep please, it just like that. Okay, cool. So first, the zoom out uh, scene right now. What you're looking at is the Aleph bet arranged finally as a number chart in a, in a sensical way. So it begins from right to left at, at the top right, where you have the symbol Aleph, and you have the Aleph in the ancient Hebrew script, 
And if you flip that on its side, that's the source of the A, you know, the Greek, the Greek A and the everything, you'll start to see, you'll start to see, you know, A, B, C, D, E, you'll start to see the source of the Greek, of the Latin, of the Cyrillic, Russian, English scripts as well from the ancient script. But yeah, so that's already a huge, uh, a huge thing. And so just, just to quickly deal with the number chart. So Aleph is the number one, Bet is two, Gimel three, Dalit four, He five. And there's an interesting thing with He and five, and we can get into that perhaps, but Vav is six, Zayn is seven, Het is eight, Tet is nine, and then begins the tens column. So Yud is 10, and then Kaf is 20. So it lines up, Aleph is one, 10, and then 100, Kaf is 100. You know, so basically it just makes sense of all the numbers finally. And the rows vertically, so this would be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, you know, so it just helps kids with math. And ideally, like I saw this video of, uh, if I may just flip for a second, I saw this video of, of like the Japanese kids who, who are studying with, like this abacus and they're like flicking their fingers. And now from muscle memory, they're just flicking their fingers and they could do these crazy numbers in their head. So I'm wondering if this is the is the way to help the visual learners connect with the numbers and connect with the sounds because the Aleph Bet have all of that in one symbol as well. So there's just right. a lot of information. So yeah, now the actual lesson of the symbols because there's a transmitted way and it's recorded word for word how the sages learned. And this is how Rebbe Akiva learned, the great sage at 40 years old because his wife said that if you go and learn, I'm going to marry you. And she saved him and saved Israel because he became the leader of right. Israel and things like that. So, is, is, Rabbi, is Rabbi Akiva's story the one also where he was in a, and I, I may be messing this up, but who was the rabbi, I'll ask, uh, that, that studied in, in for, since he was a kid, but he couldn't learn, he couldn't learn, he couldn't learn. And then I believe the, the, uh, the story is uh, if a water droplet can make a hole into a rock so can the fire of Torah burn my heart that's that, is, that very sage exactly he said if, that if, 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 so that. for those for those of the, those who don't know to give a little bit more information um, can, can you give a bit in, uh, give a, a bit of information of who Rabbi Akiva is and what his like, like greatest accomplishments are for those you know who may want to know absolutely that's that's a brilliant uh, point to make. Uh, Rabbi Akiva was uh, basically an ignorant shepherd. He, he, and he not only an ignorant shepherd, but he, in fact, he hated the sages. He hated religion. He said, if there was a sage in the room, I would destroy him with my arguments. He, I would like bite him like a donkey that shatters bone. He said all these things before, you know, and then at 40, he had this whole epiphany. Some say it was Rachel herself that told Rabbi Akiva when he witnessed and, and understood. He, he was very sharp. He had a sharp mind. He was good at business. But uh, he so he was hired by this wealthy uh, man, the wealthiest man of Israel, whose name in Aramaic actually is Kalba Savua. Kalba, Kalba is Kelev, which is a dog, because uh, in Hebrew, they say uh, the dog is called called a kelev because it's kulo lev, that it's entirely heart, that it, it mimics the heart of the owner. So that's, it's built into the, like the language when Adam named it a kelev because he saw it's like innate uh, trait basically. But anyway, he was so rich that basically his name was like a satiated dog that anyone who would come, he would feed him so much that even, even a dog would be satiated, which you know the dogs could eat nonstop forever. So anyway, he had that epiphany at 40 and uh, he went to go learn. Oh, there, there she is, the cal the Kalba. She's so cute. So, he, he, so exactly. His name is Moose. Moose. His name is Moose, and he saved my life. Oh. And he's the Moose. best dog in the world. Like, I could take him anywhere. I, I got him certified as a psychiatric service dog. Wow, that's so, amazing. So I get to fly with him for free. And he's the most, like, I'll take him to a restaurant. He'll just sit in the corner until I'm done. Oh. He's the, like, the most amazing, well-trained yeah, but I just had to bring him up. You no, no, absolutely. Thank you so much. That is the Kelev, and it's so amazing because because it's all built in, and and, and things are going to start to make sense when we we start to look up what is this thing called in Hebrew? What is what did God call it, or what did Adam call you know this thing and identify it as such? So well, also, yeah, if you don't, yeah. if you don't mind, I'm going to keep cutting you off Ooh. because there's so many things you're talking about that I want to have uh, other people understand. Absolutely. Now, 
I mean, cause some people may not know this, right? Uh, there's an idea in Judaism which states that the moment when uh, Adam was naming the, the, the different animals, um, that this is the moment when things actually came into creation from the spiritual aspect of the, the, the universe. So as I speak it, it ends up being the thing, and, and that's how it came to be on some level. Now, was it already there? Yes. God had already made it, but it was man's job to say Adam, which is Adam, right? The man, right? Or a man. And it, so, well, the Adam, both male and female. When we say the Adam, it's it's referring to both ma uh, the male and female as one, because that is a complete Adam. Yeah. Totally didn't know that, by the way. Oh wow. That's, that's yeah, you just blew my mind. You just blew my mind. Yeah, you yeah. just blew my mind with that statement. So, Amazing. Back, yeah, I'm happy to hear that. And then I want to also I want to also share another thing with you, which is a simple uh, gematria yeah. that I'm, I know you, I'm sure you already know it, but to share it with people because we're in the Aleph Bet, we're learning about language, we're learning about the numbers of the language, yeah. and then we're also learning about um, the, the 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 interwoven beauty of the thing. Well, so. Um, yeah, because there's so much there. Like the the yeah. one, that, and I'll say, I'll say it now. Uh, in the Aleph base, uh, Aleph Bet, depending on where you're from, whether you're Ashkenazi or Sephardic, uh, and I did a whole explanation uh, based on marijuana. I don't know if oh, you've wow. ever heard this before. No, I love <laughs> <The> Ashkenazi. <laughs> They're so good. So Ashkenazis of the world live in the northern parts, right? They're wearing mostly black and whites. They're working the strimals. They're very hard and very tight kind of people. Now, the Sephardic are going to be those who live in the equator of the world, colorful, bright, flowery colors, uh, the, the perfumes, the, 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 everything, right? Super different people, but if you think about it, the same, so we're talking about marijuana, the same, indica, very deep, heavy, nice. sativa, very flowery and bright. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So that's that one. And then the other one is, um, and this is a very cool thing for those who want to go out there and try to write this down. There's a letter, uh, there's the words Abba and Ima. Abba means father. Ima means uh, mother. Now, Abba is, uh, the base of that is Ab, Aleph and base, the, those two together. Now, when you add that together, that's one plus two is three. Now, right. now, if you do Ima, which is Aleph and Mem, the Aleph is a, a, a one, the Mem is 40, right? Right. So if you, you add 40 and one, 41, plus you add a, 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 a Abba, Ab, just the, the base letters of that, you get 44, which makes yel, Yeledin or yel, uh, Yeled, which means child. Yeah. So you have to think, okay, so anybody who's watching this right now, you have to think that there's a language that was created some 5,000 years ago that somehow or another mathematically connected these ideas as well. Right. All right, mind blown. But, right. but hold on, hold on. It says in the numbers, you can have a mother and a father, and it will create a child, but without an extra one, one being God, Aleph, you don't have Adam. Wow. The soul. The soul. You don't have the soul. It's like, get out of here, bro. So there's so so many times when people are like, why do you like Judaism so much? And I'm like, man, I've studied every religion I could. I've wow. grabbed onto everything. I've read the Bhagavad Gita. I've read the, everything, every major source. Wow. And the only two sources that really have any weight, in my opinion, are Judaism and Buddhism. And right. they're like, like super like right all on top of each other all over the place and you could say if you wanted to go with like jewish ideology is that abraham had actually created the idea of buddhism through and when he had sent out his children in the world they all took a piece of something and this is one of those pieces that we find and that we can uh in some way connect to okay i, I that's enough for me <laughs> yeah, that, that's I would love to hear more of that myself. You know, that's that's this is exactly what I love. I was gonna say if you didn't hear Rabari Kaplan uh, notes that the the word Buddha or Boded may even come from the Hebrew Boded, which means to seclude yourself and to 
to lehit bodet, to cause yourself to be secluded, and badad, badad yeshev, they say that like in Ecclesiastes, that they'll sit alone. So the word badad, bad means to be like this alone, and like where bud comes from, like a, a single bud on a flower, that's it's a single unit. So bud means to be like this alone concept, to be a standalone and to, to have that space so you could think and meditate for sure. Wow. And also let it be known for those who don't know this, meditation was the way to connect before there was a congregation and before that started. And for those who don't know, many of the reasons that congregation was created was based on the fact that the dispersia happened for the Jews. We had no way to uh, have a, a way to be together. And so this idea of congregating together to remember the words of God, both in the written and the oral tradition. And this then, of course, uh, you know, transmutes itself into every religion and every idea and, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So keep going. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, so also, like speaking about like the concept of meditation and Rabari Kaplan in, in, in the Rub's book on, on meditation, Basically, there he 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 said that the word ahava in Hebrew is thirteen numerically, aleph, hey, bet, and hey, and the word echad, which is one, <clears throat> is also thirteen numerically, aleph, het, and dalit. And so, showing like any links, gematria is good, and why it's the most kind of quoted thing in the world when it has to do with the aleph. That is because it just shows an objective link in information, you know. So, it's just this number and this number. It's exactly the same in the in following the method. And so, ahava is thirteen, and echad is thirteen, showing the link that the very thing that unites is love. The very thing that makes it one is love, you know. And that's like the one love where it comes from, you know. The the, the the reggae chanting the one love it's a it's a deep concept you know so it, it that's and and so to get even deeper and then back to the literally the symbol aleph is that one love ahava and echad together is is 13 and 13 together is 26 and that is the name of, of god that is the name like the tetragrammaton and so all these kinds wow. of things but yeah wow <laughs> wow wow uh, okay, so now on top of all of this, for those who don't know, um, there are many words that have the same number, right? That you can add these numbers together and you're going to get, like if you uh, if you look up the number 216, right? I'm just putting it out there, but, or 184, it doesn't matter, 45, you're not going to just find one word like Adam. You're going to find a bunch of words that fit in that number but what's really trippy is that all of the words that go to that number are somehow or another correlated with the same exact ideology. Yeah, exactly. It's a web of ideas that all links. And to understand something, you have to understand the other words and how it's scrambled and all the other possible combinations the word could make. This is discussed in the writings of, uh, of a, of a, of a mystic sage from a thousand years ago, Rabbeinu Abraham Abu Lafia, who was called uh, Abraham the seer, because he really had uh, tremendous uh, powers because of his uh, clarity of soul and, and the study that uh, he received. And he basically says it's called Siruf. Siruf is the connecting of symbols together. And it's also used by like connecting the pieces of a necklace together or a bracelet together, let's aref. And it has to do with uh, con combining and connecting. So when you want to break down a word, then scrambling the word uh, would re reveal all those different words that are spelt with those same symbols all show that link in information. And, and an example that I could even give is that year ah, which is translated as fear incorrectly, which is probably awe, right? Year ah is awe. And what is awe exactly? It is re'iya, re'iya is sight. It's the same symbols as yira. It's re'iya when you see in arye. Again, the same symbols. When you see a lion in front of you, that's awe. That's majesty. There is a fear for your life, but there's more this awe and reverence and like respect. That's what yira is. It has nothing to do with fear because with, with the infinite one, there's nothing to fear. That's the thing. So... Uh, it's a very huge mental shift, but yeah, I could let's uh, walk through the symbols real quick, as quick as I can. Yeah, let's go back. Let's go Absolutely. back. We're all over the place, but I love it. It's Absolutely. great. 
and, so and Chris, uh, uh, one of the people who's watching the show almost daily now, and she says, I love everything that, I'm le that I learned from watching and listening in a daily, very informative. Wow. Thumbs up, 100 hearts, hearts. So just wanted to let you know that, uh, and I don't think Chris is Jewish by any by any means, and she's like right. fully into this conversation. So yeah, um, that's the thing. I this think is what we're doing everyone. is a beautiful thing. Yeah, together. By the way, everyone, because all humanity is one family. That's like one, like we opened up so, like several lectures with just this concept because it's really meant for everybody. There's no such concept that we're supposed to have let's say, assuming that we have this life-saving healing information or whatever beneficial information, and you're gonna, we're gonna hold it to ourselves. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't, it never happened. It's always about uh, connecting and sharing and, and what you do is amazing. The fact that you bring all the different people together and, and, and as my, you know, you know my awesome friend who, who, who got me in contact. Yeah, with so, I mean, that was the idea of this in the end, in the end right? So like in this morning, Last night, I spent. I sent out. I was like, oh, I don't have a guest for tomorrow. Oh wow! And then this morning, I put it out. I was like, I don't have a guest. I need a guest. And then I asked my Isaac, and I was like, Bro, guest? And he's like, I got you. And then, like within a ten minute period of yeah. like literally eight fifty to nine fifty, and we were like, Yes, let's go live. Yeah. And 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 like this is what I want this to be. Like I've been trying to express it. Uh, but it's been working so well naturally and honestly and just being this ugh, giving, right. this giving. And it's just – and, I, and I, I say it again and again, but I feel like I get to read a book a day. Wow. That's because amazing. I'm learning from somebody else's, like, life. Right. The you know, like, you're, this is your life. This is your passion. This is your thing. And it's like, yo – Feed me, bro. Feed me. <laughs> That's, That's so amazing. You say that because literally every single person is their own book in a way. And, and the, the chance to speak to them is literally the symbol Aleph, which shows that unity of the face-to-face -face conversation. And we'll get into that right now. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I'm so happy that this worked out. And episode 22 is the most perfect thing for the 22 Aleph bet. There's nothing greater. So. Oh, yeah, for episode Isaac, 22? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, it, 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 it doesn't get better than this, bro. <laughs> it had to be. It had to be. So it's amazing. All right, so, so look, yeah. I'm going to mute myself. You start right. talking. I'm just going to listen. Oh, definitely, definitely. Absolutely. And uh, stop me whenever and uh, we'll go through it because the, the Aleph bet is a visual thing. The, the most important thing I could say, or one of the most important things, is that this is not learning how to read Hebrew. This is learning how to see symbols and you'll understand them as easy as you would a stop sign. You know, Aleph is a unity sign, Bet is a division sign, and we're going to get into it. And just to show how it's all visual, when God speaks and creates, when God said, let there be an etz, let there be a tree spelt with ayin and sadi, literally, the, just the shapes combine, and it looks exactly like what it is. So a tree, which is spelt with the symbol ayin, and with the symbol sadi, codes for a tree, and the shoresh, the roots, look exactly like what the roots look like. So it's all visual. It's all visual. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. So here we go. This is how the this is how Rebbe Akiva started at 40. So you're saying that the symbol Aleph is really made up of two symbol Yuds, one above and one below. And the symbol Yud, the sages discuss, is like the head of a person. You know, the ID just takes a picture of your of your face. You know, and so the head of a person is the Yud. And skipping a little bit. The head of a person with the body, essentially, is the symbol Vav. So you got the head of a person, which is the Yud. A Vav would be a head of a person with a body. And we're going to go in order from there, but I just wanted to show because that's important. Anyway, the Aleph is showing that these two heads are sitting opposite one another, opposite the table, having a conversation face to face. And that's literally the meaning of Aleph. And that's like the high school chairs where you would have like the desk attached kind of to the chair. So it would be two chairs attached to the desk in the middle and the people are learning face to face and having the conversation. <laughs> even if they're exactly, even, even if they're on opposite sides, it's the same kind of unity. It's them trying to have that communication. And that's what makes peace. Aleph is like the bridge, the unity being the number one and all these kinds of things. And so almost the like duality as well, right? 
Yes, exactly. Because it shows when when a person has the fi- the full Torah kind of and the full consciousness, they know the difference between everything. They they could differentiate between things and see the flip sides. Kind of like the where the yin yang concept as well, the balance. But I think that there might be a secret to one of the yuds being a slightly bigger. I'm not sure which one, but this one here, the bottom one's a little bit bigger. But the point is, is that the good is more powerful than the evil. Kind so of. my my interpretation to that, when you said yeah. that that one is bigger than the other, mm-hmm. I would take that as being that uh, the difference in Judaism that says that we're both man and animal, mm, and that wow. our animal side is uh, uh, on some level bigger because it's what we're physically within, right. and yet the other part that's up, that's going up, the yud that goes up is the one that's connected to God. And right. so that's the one that makes you your manly self, right? And not your animal self. And so yeah. the animal self is the thing that we're trying to overcome. And that's, that's amazing. And the unity yeah, together. I mean, that's, that's what I get cool. when, right. when you, w- with what you just told me. And yeah. this concept is so amazing because you're going to see things that no one else can see because you have lived your life. And now you're going to see things that stand out to you and to your unique being and person. And, and hopefully that you could share with us because that's the point of the Aleph is that we need everyone together because everyone's going to help set off different thoughts and different and seize different things that, that people may not be. So, uh, you know, that's amazing. So please, uh, as well, that's an amazing concept. I'm so stoked, man. <laughs> amazing. So, so the, 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 the kids also, they group the symbols together. So they say Aleph, Bet, together. They say, learn together as one face to face. The Torah that begins with a big symbol, Bet. That's why it's also bigger here as opposed to the other symbols. And in addition, it has four crowns. That's the transmission from Sinai, that in addition to it being big, it should ideally have these four crowns on the top. And so the the symbol bet, as it is right now, bigger with the four crowns, basically alludes to the entire uh, written Torah, the beginning of the revelation of Sinai. And it's a beginning symbol because it's like a closed bracket. If you imagine like a little guy in the middle and you're starting to walk, you can't walk this way, right? You could only go out to the future. So the Hebrew moves from right to left. And so it begins with a bet wow. and it goes out. Yeah, beginning of creation. So right away, the kids are telling us the importance of having a friend in unity, husband and wife, heaven and earth, all these concepts in Aleph, and learning together the Torah that, that teaches the differentiation. Bet is numerically two. And it could show like splitting like heaven and earth going top and bottom. And it shows the difference between things, how to understand what is good for you, what is not good for you, what, you know, all these kinds of things are in there. And then they say, Gimel Dalit is Gimel Dalim. Give help to those who are reaching out. So the Gimel is extending a helping hand, literally a Yad, which is the symbol Yud, upside down being extended, which is the hand. Yud is Yad. So literally, it's presenting a little hand to the guy reaching out and saying, I need help. And so give help to those in need. That's the second key to life is when you you have to help people in need. And these are the first four symbols already, you know. So just the wisdom that it starts you off built in. And now we're about to see that it takes off because if you do those first four symbols, the infinite God is then going to reward you in the following way. And so so it continues. The the infinite God who gave the wait, two Torahs. Wait, 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 yeah, wait. Yeah. wait. <laughs> let's let's review this because you just blew my mind on <laughs> so many levels. So go yeah, back. Yeah, let's yeah. go back. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's go back to the to the to the thing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can remember this the way that you just said it to me. Absolutely. Aleph, on some level, is a representation of yourself and also a table and two people talking to each other. Right. The base, the next letter, is the, uh, the, the culmination of everything that is, and, right. it, it's, uh, and it, it's basically the beginning. Right? right, the beginning, it is heaven start. and earth, visually, heaven and earth, everything's included within this symbol, as you even said, exactly. Literally. Right. And then the next one is, okay, so now that you're alive and you're here, Guess what? You're supposed to give to those who need help. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is exactly right. You and help then after you give need. help, which is the person that's asking for help, this Reaching is what out. Exactly. And they say that ideally the giver is sort of looking back 
you know, he's doing it. He's looking at his house. Bet is bite also. So you could do it visually that in, you know, there's a unity that's in the house. And then you leave the house. The gimel looks like two footsteps also. But then is a, essentially the symbol Zayin right here, right? With that symbol Yud together to form the gimel. And the secret of the gimel is this white triangle here because gimel is three numerically. And the way to write a perfect gimel, there's a hidden white triangle within the gimel. And the gimel ideally is giving to the dalit discreetly. He's looking this way and the dalit is looking that way. But the dalit's reaching out because it has to make itself known to the giver. It can't hide away because the giver could never reach them. And so the giver then gives to the dalit and the dalit receives it and it becomes a hey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's all connected, man. Okay. Man, you have me so messed up right now, dude. <laughs> I know. You man. have I'm me so you. messed up right now, dude. I've been you have up, me bro. wanting to run to Israel and become a rabbi, bro. Thank you. Man. You have freaked <laughs> me out today. Wow, I'm so. What happy. an amazing, <laughs> what an amazing breakdown, bro. Yo, absolutely, man. Oh, this this is what keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, getting back into it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm so happy to hear it. So, so that it tells a whole story in that way. And there's many ways that you can, it's like you can go through the Aleph Bet with different themes. And like, let's say following the theme of like the giver giving to the poor, they receive it, you know, but also conceptually, we'll, we'll explain, we'll explain more. But the basic lesson is, is where we begin, because this is how Rebbe Akiva started. And then we could build on that from other sources and things like that. But continuing the lesson, so right, if we have that unity and we're learning and we're helping the poor, the infinite God who gave the two Torahs on Sinai, which is alluded to with the hay and the vav, because the hay is numerically five, and as we say on Pesach, the five-fifths of Torah, right? Who knows five? I know five. Five are the fifths of Torah, and who knows six? Six are the orders of the Mishnah, the organizations of the whole Torah Shebel Peh. So if you do this, the, the, the God, the infinite God, the giver of the Torahs on Sinai is going to, who gave the five fifths and the six orders, is going to sustain you. Zayin is Zan, which is literally the sound of electricity. The Zayin is the buzzing of, of electricity. So it's gonna, like God is going to sustain you like electricity to a video game. And that's how reality really generates where like the matrix came from. Every second, God is really generating it at every second. That's what's so significant. So God's going to generate you and sustain you. And then God is going to favor you. And Chet is literally an open door, like an archway. You go in. And that's what Chet is. You know, when, when you find favor, the it's as if you could have you, an open could door. Could you take it a step further? Yes. Wait, could you Absolutely. take it a step further and say that Chet is also like a hoopah and you're kind of marrying to God's ideas? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, absolutely. That's that's literally the build. So so just to, to bring back what we referenced earlier, Yud is the head, Vav is the head with the body, but Rabbi Ari Kaplan notes that this is like a person with also depicting, sorry, the brain stem, which goes up the neck and to the left, which is the left hemisphere. And that's the logical linear thinking, right? And so that's only one half the brain. So you need to reach Zion, which is super consciousness, which is two vavs back to back, essentially, which reaches then the bursting forth, as you could see, super consciousness and everything that has to do with super consciousness looks in this shape, like terpenes and mushrooms and different things. It's an amazing shape for that reason. But yeah, basically saying that once you're born, once the little baby comes out and you're born and you grow up, you reach levels of super consciousness when you do good and study Torah. You then get married, and they're exactly, the two souls uniting under the chuppah and chet for chatuna and the wedding, and you're about to be extra mind blown by the symbol. And after, after nine months, after the wedding, right, what do you see within the white of the tet? Do you see that? No way, <laughs> bro! The baby in the womb, you see it, right? The baby, the head, the umbilical cord going up in the white. So that's why after the whole system, you get to Tet and then the Yelid, as you said earlier, the Yelid, the baby's born. The baby's now born. And that's also inheritance, that God's going to not only have you find favor and open doors for you, give you children, the blessing of children, and then give you 
inheritance of the world to come because the, the symbol Yud is also, the sages say, is the symbol that God created the world to come with because it's the smallest symbol and only those who are humble could enter. What in the world? I know. Bro, what in the world are you doing to me today? <laughs> you tell me why. That's exactly it, man. It's it's just the realest, most beautiful stuff that's been hidden away, and it's scattered like a brilliant gem that's shattered into a billion pieces, and we're trying to piece it back together from the start to, to, to finish. So the very foundations first, the Aleph Bet symbols themselves, how Rebbe Akiva started, why the sages spend so much time going into his story in such great detail to teach us that if a person wants to begin at any age, at any level, this is the symbols. This, these, That's this insane, is the way. bro. This so is, there's a couple of messages here. People yeah. are, are, are tagging in and they're just loving it. But um, oh, absolutely. Says, uh, Chris Thank says... You. Well, actually says, wow, I didn't even realize episode 22. That's crazy. Chris says, <laughs> uh, I cannot I cannot wait to share what I'm learning here today. I'm definitely yeah. saving this episode to uh, as a resource to reference back. Amazing. And then Isaac says, he's laughing at something, and then he says, Chris, I tell you, I was raised religious and learned Judaism in Israel for two years. I've never heard things broken down so simply and coherently so easy to digest an entire language and then uh chris comes back and says i love this incredible i am now understanding this more clearly wow. and uh and then he says oh my god the negative space i see it <laughs> that's it that's wow, it what a that's great it. episode this is turning into being bro yeah, no, i am loving you so much for this thank you so much man, man. Thank, thank you for your thank time you, and bro. energy and uh, all the time that you've spent, spent uh, studying this, bro. Absolutely, to make it man. so thank clearly you. visible and understandable and digestible for anybody who watches this. It's thank so you. good, dude. Thank you so much. That's exactly man. the goal. I was trying to write the bio, but that's exactly it. Just to help people get these symbols because, they're first of all, they're going to start on a higher level. So, like, when, when I, let's say, when I'm giving somebody the symbols, they are now basically, I'm... I'm hopefully saving them all those years of search, pointing them to the sources directly as well. If you have all the stuff that I say could actually be sourced, so I could send a list if anyone's interested, you know, after. But uh, all of it is sourced and, and just to get the people to have these keys and use them throughout and they're gonna share things that that gonna blow my mind even more than anything that I've you know, studied myself. It's really, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I go, no, it's re it really is quite, quite, a, uh, almost alarming to me and a little sad that these ideas that we're talking about, like just on the basis, basic level, like we're, right. we're literally kindergarten children and you're teaching yeah. us kindergarten class like lessons. And yeah. it's so mind blowing to an adult. Yes. To an adult. Exactly. It's, it's so that's what I'm it's, sad yeah. about yeah. is that we don't teach this to children like this ideas the ideas that we're talking about like everybody should learn the olive base just to know this information not to even learn judaism bro yes just to understand yes. the idea that hey there's an idea this is you you need to go out to the world and do things for others when you do things for others things will come to you doors right. will open favor will come to you you'll find a partner you'll have a child hello life <laughs> You know, <laughs> exactly. It's all the things that people know sort of innately, finally given the symbols to like confirm for them, you are on the right track. You you felt it correctly. Like, yes, this is what's important. You know, having good friends, having unity, studying wisdom, helping those in need and all those good things will follow. And you love this as well, that one of the two, one of the things that the Gmail, sorry, I'll get to flip this here. One of the things that the, the Gmail depicts in, in the ancient Hebrew script is a boomerang, and it's called a gamla. A gamla means to give back, right? So it, it pays back. So it's so literally what, so what you throw you, out comes back to you. 
Exactly, exactly. And it's and you could you could wow. you could go to the lesson that it's like whatever you learn at home is sort of what you can give out to the world and hopefully you fix it so that if it was a broken home, you don't have to give that out obviously. Gamla has to do with also stopping something. So you don't have to continue any evil cycles. You can stop the cycles and break the chain and break the cycle. That's what the the Vilna Gaon says is the secret to redemption is to shatter all these repetitive cycles that people could find themselves in and just keep shattering them. And the, the barriers in life, literally, it, biblically, is called the Satan. What is Satan or the Satan? It's just roadblocks in life that builds you like an exercise machine, as Rabbi Zamir Cohen says. And it's, a, yeah, it's alluded to in, this, uh, in the symbol Tet as well, the one that was for the baby in the womb, which depicts the greatest good protected and sheltered but at the same time the black shape of the of the tet is confirmed in sefer yitzira rabbi Ari kaplan quoting rabbi uh, rabbi avraham avinu that the tet depicts a snake and a serpent it's like head right up up here and it goes down and on its belly and its tail curls around and so how could the tet be good right because isn't the snake sort of the symbol of evil but the point is, is that without that, that evil and without the barriers and without the temptation, there is no level. There is no point to this world. The point is, is that you are given a chance to become great. And the sages say, if you can control that serpent, it could do amazing things for you. If you control your body and your things, you will, it will bring you amazing uh, gems, even they said, like you, <laughs> the, by uh, the initial Adam in the Garden of Eden. It said that he lost the tremendous servant when the, the snake was punished uh, that day or whatever happened. And, you know, Rabbi Joel David Bax discusses these concepts as well. So just important to say that for, for people as well. So it reminds me, when you say that uh, and you talk about the serpent, uh, yeah. and again, I'm paraphrasing. I don't, I, you know, I don't know all this very well, but there is a, 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 a supposedly uh, a prince of, of God, uh, right. right, which many people consider satan right and that right. th this character comes to us and tells us to do bad things so that he can run back to god and say oh look i got him to do something bad right. what character is that so 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 that's actually two different characters which is interesting or maybe one in the same <laughs> and from the concept that god is one really everything is one in a way but the 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 satan is is its own kind of thing because it's named separately but the sages just say that the the Satan, quote unquote, has three sort of faces or three manifestations or heads kind of. Uh, so it, it's manifested in the body as maybe like the lazy urge, the urge to do something not good or whatever. Then if the person does it, it manifests as the Satan in the heavens to say, look what he did. And then God forbid, if the person doesn't repent and doesn't change and doesn't do anything for all this time that God's holding back sort of the karma if they did something, let's say, really not good, whatever, then that karma will be visited upon them by the angel of death, quote unquote, uh, to pay back the person. So it's like the three faces of one entity, kind of the same thing. But again, God is so merciful that, it, you know, many pe people who left religion, I remember my grandfather telling me that, uh, you know, I call him my grandfather, but he, he, when, he, when he left, he was scared you know, at 13 or whatever, he, he if he turns on the light on the Sabbath, you know, he's going to get zapped by lightning or something, you know, he's going to die. So all these kinds of things. And that's obviously not how God works, because God is our loving parents. Do parents ever kill their child for, for doing something? No, absolutely not. The point is, is that a person could just sort of either benefit themselves or kind of damage themselves. But we're not even talking about mess ups and things. But yeah, God is so merciful that you're not going to die if something like that happens. You're not going to do this. God waits for a thousand years. You know, God waits all this time. God gave the generation of the flood 120 more years, which is insane. If the, if the generation is so corrupt, how do you even give them one more day to live? But God gave them 120 years because to say how merciful God is, but eventually God's going to have to act because if not, people are going to say there is no God or God sides with evil, letting it run rampant. So all these kinds of things, it's a, it's a crazy balance. Okay, yeah. you just hit another nerve. Yeah. So here it comes. Uh, um, yeah. And this is going to now delve totally out of the the Aramaic world, but still sort of what you were just talking about. It's all it's all, it's all connected. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know it is. Oh, I know it is. But it's still here. It comes. Um, 
do you feel that artificial intelligence and or our future uh, of, of, of connecting technology to our body, do you feel that that is part of the process of what we're doing? Like we're meant to become technological weird things? It's so interesting. I think that, uh, um, well, Rabbi, Rabbi Bax, uh, Rabbi Joel David Bax explains in, in his book, he says that there's basically two ways that the Messianic era is prophesized in, in, in the prophets. One verse says that m the Messiah is going to come upon the clouds, you know, of glory. It's going to be miraculous, all these things. The other verse says that he's going to be this poor man riding on a lowly donkey through town, you know, all these kinds of things. So two seemingly contradictions, and there's a principle that there's no such thing. If there's two verses that contradict, there's a third verse somewhere that resolves the uh, any seemingly thing, one of the 33 paths of extracting Torah information. Anyway, so it says that, um, uh, sorry, what was that last uh, thing there that I just said, if I may? The, uh, the 30 I was talking paths. about uh, transhumanism and turning into robots. You made a point about oh, the prophecy, how the prophecy, there's two different right. aspects of that. Yes, thank you. Uh, and that one of them is, and from what I'm gathering, is that if all of us come together, we are Messiah, we are the Mashiach, we can do it on our own by us being all the Mashiach, very Gandhi, be the change you want to be in the world idea. And then also the other way is that we, uh, in the lonely donkey uh, analogy, it is, in essence, we're already made per perfect, we're already made to connect. We're already made to be this beautiful thing that we are, yet with our own consciousness and ego, we totally denounce all of it for some reason. We, we say that we're not even part of the tree. Yeah, we look at the tree. And, and in essence, in doing so, we end up becoming less of what we are. So we end right. up being a lonely man with a donkey. Uh, <laughs> this right. idea that we think we know and, right. and, and, and in essence, well, all we're really doing is putting a carrot in front of the, the donkey with our own stick, our own thoughts, our own things, and thinking that we're so great with our little donkey as we walk towards God. And then we get there and we go, oh, God. <laughs> that, that's a beautiful way to also, like, interpret that as well. Uh, and and uh, just to answer, because you were asking specifically about, like, the AI stuff, but and like kind of like technology and science so rapidly increasing, doubling or every day or whatever it is it's doing now. But Rabbi Bax is saying that the, the Vilna Gaon was, was struggling to understand how could it be that there's these two sort of ways. What is the middle way, basically? It's in like quantum physics, there's a word for it, like the superposition or something. It's like, it's not this and not that. It's this new thing in the middle, something. Yeah, I think, and so, I think the closest thing yeah. we found to that so far is the God particle, which is in, uh, uh, in quarks, right? And it's one of the, I think, 12 or 14 different types of quarks that there are, which are the, the elemental aspects of what makes up an atom. Right. And within that, I'm um, just, you know, yeah. and, uh, and in that there is this uh, idea of what's called the God particle. They literally called it that. And the reason they call it that is because it exists. It does not exist. It has weight. It doesn't have weight. Uh, things can travel through it, but it can also stop things. So it has this very weird wow. essence of spirit <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> on some level. It blends they, in they're still it trying to figure out to this day. Wow. Yeah, it definitely starts. Uh, yeah. Sorry, there's a, there's a couple here things. Uh, it says, yeah. yeah, if Neuralink can stop epilepsy, is that God or Satan? How are we able to differ differentiate? And then uh, Chris says, okay, Paul, do you have an opinion or could we be more productive as a society if we are president, if our president was a robot, therefore being emotionless? Woo, there's oh, wow. some questions here. So I'll let you answer that first one from Isaac. Uh, what do you think oh, yeah. if, uh, if, 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 if Elon Musk is able to make people uh, hear and uh, see and, uh, and walk, right. which are some of the reasons I think that they say the Antichrist, for those who are into the Antichrist uh, uh, jargon, that yeah. that person will be able to speak a bunch of languages. They'll be able to help the heal the sick and the da 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 da. And right. people will all run towards him because that's supposedly uh, the the person who can save us. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, 
you know, as we said, like everything is potential. And uh, but uh, what Rabbi Bax was saying that the Vilna Gaon is saying there's going to be essentially a synthesis of the two. One is like super miraculous if Israel merits and if we're good people, as you said, if we unite and do all these things. One is if if it if we don't merit and it just sort of has to come at a deadline or whatever it is, it's going to come in this very physical, natural way. And it's kind of the difference between the two temples. The first temple was miraculous. David, you know, God gave his enemies into his and they took over the everything and uh, you know the world was saved built the temple with Solomon everything the second one was very natural they are trying to get people to come back to Israel they had to have an army to protect them from building the wall of Jerusalem because they started to build it and they were being attacked so there's these two ways and Tanakh already showed us two two full ways how it could go down so this new middle road that Rabbi Bax is saying is going to be the synthesis of miraculous science. So it's science, and it's in a natural way, but it's happening so fast and such crazy revelations that are being revealed that it's miraculous at the same time. So it's this blend of things. So I personally think, also I've heard, not know what I personally think, but I've heard from, from people that as we got to our age, whatever tools we had mentally sort of became more external. Like we have all the stuff in the phone. Back then people knew the numbers and maps in their head or whatever they did, but now everything's super external. So there was a way to once have that power. So I'm thinking that there is a way to make that jump and it's possibly through the symbols that we started to learn together today. And there is a way to do that but if not, then it might be happening still in a natural way with this neural link and kind of thing. So it's going to be that God is giving people that Aleph, that choice between things. How do you want it to go down? Do you want it to be supernatural and all that? Or do you want it to be more natural in this? God is still in his mercy. He's making it sort of a supernatural scientific revolution wow. and crazy stuff going on. Hidden away still. But Just those amazing, it, right? Uh, there's a line... Uh, in Judaism, that says it's the 11 corners of God, and no matter how many times you turn the corner, you'll never see, see the face of God. Right. But it also says that whatever you do in life, if you go deep enough, you'll always find God. Right. Like, no matter what you do, right? right. And, and there was this beautiful thing I watched last night. I posted it on my Facebook page, and it's a conversation with Rodney Mullen. Rodney Mullen's oh, wow. a very famous uh, yeah. skateboarder. He's a guy who created, like, all the skateboarding, you know, tricks that are Wait, on the ground you were interviewing um, Robin Mullen, you're saying what's that? you were just talking uh, to Robin Mullen? you were just talking no no to no I just, just saw I just I wish uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just like, saw wow. I just saw a, uh, a podcast that he was on right and and he expresses this idea that um and he's so so connected man this guy's so connected you have to watch this please go to my profile yeah. and watch it later but it's just so good Definitely. and he's so Definitely. soft and so sincere Wow. And, 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 and he says, you know, uh, becoming famous and getting number one and being number one for 10 years in a row or whatever, it was great, but it wasn't the thing. Hmm. And he wow. goes, and he goes, you know, and, and reaching the top and being at the top and signing autographs. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I'm not going to complain about it, but that's not the thing. You know, he goes, on the other hand, when I go to a skate park now and I see somebody doing something that I created and changing it to their own thing. He goes, that's the real legacy, bro. Nice. That's the real legacy. And I was like, Oh my God, dude, you're so clean. <laughs> you're so clean. Okay. You know? Uh, but going back to this idea of transhumanism and I have this theory that we are supposed to become conscious light. Yes. And, and so that we are supposed to be without having to reference words or energy through our throat or anything. I could just bleep, and you have the ideas <laughs> and to get to that. I would need to have my consciousness recorded, memorized something. Right, and, yeah. and in turn, if everybody were to do that, we would end up becoming a hive mind. We would end up becoming the Messiah, if you will. Right. Because we are all connected, we are all one. Right. And so, this is my this is my crux for this thing that um, there's a guy whose name is Ryder Rips. He made a really good documentary about the Board Ape Yacht Club and how he believes that Board Ape Yacht Clubs is a, a very Nazi oriented, eugenics oriented uh, idea, what? and uh, and that's why the NFT put, t took off so big, and that's why it's still so big to this day. 
And so um, he he has this idea, right? That that uh, it's called riding the Kali Yuga. Kali mm. being the god of destruction and the Yuga being a wave. So riding the wave of death, if you will, right? And and on another weird level, there's this idea of entropy in science, and entropy is in essence a wave of destruction in a way yeah. it's not really necessarily destruction it just makes things messy right. like the best way i've seen it explained is if you had like you sat there and you made a castle in the sand for hours and then the waves just come and hit it and they don't necessarily make the whole thing fall they melt it melts right. the the and that's entropy interesting oh, so wow. everything that we're living within is entropy right right, right. And so, it, 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 so the 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 dual dualistic nature of life that we have, like we know that we're in this universe that's ninety nine point nine percent nothing, and only one percent something. And through all of that one percent, you and I exist. Billions of light years exist. The the planetary thing, the, everything that we know, happens within a small. Of a moment, the best representation is the picture of Michael uh, of, of Leonardo with the finger of God yeah. almost, almost touching, and it's like we are the space between the fingers of God and man, wow. and we're getting to live in this beautiful moment right now in existence, yeah. where we're getting to share stupidly crazy, awesome ideas yes. with hundreds of people mm -hmm. in. In the in the in the in what would be considered hours days, because right. I you know, I know that this is going to get a bunch of views. I know it I will. Yes, um, I, I, and, I, I, and, I, and just because of the context of what we're talking about, the idea of 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 many people don't even know what Aramaic is, right. and they think oh. once again, like you said, that Aramaic is a totally different language from Hebrew, and it's not. It's the same language, exactly. and it's like, yo, dude. <laughs> like you have to understand that we're talking about Mesopotamia. We're talking about like the earliest of earliest languages here. <laughs> we, we all understood it. We all spoke it. We all understood it. And I think that even today our souls understand it. Like who we are deep inside understand it, even though we may consciously not. But we will because it's easy to pick up. That's that's a very huge key. Also, I I, I want I thought to share with you because it's also. Um, Rabbi Bax, and you touched upon like the, the messiahs. It's important to know also that the the Rub says that uh, in the name of the Vilna Gaon, in the name of the the giant mystics, that there's actually two messiahs, and it answers so many questions and arguments that people have been having over the centuries. You know, our leader is the messiah. No, our leader is the you know. So what's going on here? So the Rub is explaining that there's a messiah son of Joseph, and there's a messiah son of David. And son of Joseph is not limited to genealogy that he has to be a direct bloodline descendant of Joseph. He has to exemplify what the Messiah of Joseph does, which is exemplified by the Joseph character in the Torah, where he prepared the way for Jacob. He prepared the way for Israel. He prepared the way in Egypt and he saved the world. He helped uh, stop, you know, and prepare all these kinds of things. So the same way that that is what the Messiah of Joseph is going to do. And the reason for the two the Messiah of Joseph is supposed to elevate the world back to Gan Eden, back to the Garden of Eden. And the Messiah of David was supposed to take it where it should have gone the first time. Adam never had to fall. He could have elevated all reality where he was placed. And because it fell, we fell into this 3D realm out of 4D, out of 5D, and we're here in this world. But we have to first get back up to where we fell out of and then elevate it even further. And the Messiah of Joseph is every man, woman, and child. So it's not limited to men or children, you know, or women. It's men, women, children, whoever furthers what the Messiah of Joseph does, which is teaching Torah, helping settle the land of Israel, not necessarily if whatever the Israel government, but the, the holy land itself, which at, biblically is massive, and it includes all of our, all of those territories that surround the little sliver today. And again, when there's going to be that world peace and universal consciousness of God, it's not going to come through politics. It's going to come through podcasts like you're doing and connecting with people and, and, and talking in the real moments. That's what's going to bring it. So uh, that's the two messiahs. Yeah, absolutely. So now so, I, I'm going to go back to because what you just said yeah. triggered something else yeah. inside of me. 
uh, it, it it makes me feel because if I look at the world that I live within, right? I'm not living within a world of us being hippies and living in the forest and being happy and connecting with technology in a positive way. I just don't see it. Right. So if that's the case, I see us becoming bored, like hmm. literally genetically modified nano babies. Like we are going to create wow. beings that are going to be like connected to the hive at birth. That's crazy. I don't man. Take it. it doesn't take much longer before we get there. Right. right. Uh, another 25 years, 30 years, 50 years tops. I'll tell you. We're already genetically modifying ourselves as it is with the new Crimea gene, with uh, uh, with uh, the ability to do things. Right. How long does it take before? And they, mind you, 10, 15 years ago in Japan or China, they were doing uh, uh, genetic marker changes for the intelligence of your child. If he had blue eyes, brown hair, blonde hair, how tall? how much you know all of that's already been done we've already been doing this for a while right how much you know we're the it's weird because we are the first generation of humanity that has the ability to change the game prior to us no one had that ability yeah. the game was the game yeah. so now yeah. that leads me to believe that with what you're saying about Adam having the ability to have been able to rise up at the moment of being in the Garden of Eden, here's my trippy trip. How do we not know that what we are going to consider um, artificial general intelligence, not super intelligence, but just general intelligence, which is considered to be 5,000 times one person? So, okay. Wow. So, so how what, is that what, not what God? Oh, if. Yeah. You're saying that how if uh, if someone has if the AI has all this wisdom, you're saying is that what you're saying, right? If it yeah, has let's, all... let's say we did. Let's say we got uh, a large language model, right? right, and connected it to every document that was ever written by hmm. by any Jewish scholar, including the Torah, including every single piece of Judaism that you could find, right. Good, bad, ugly, sideways, doesn't matter. Throw it into the machine. Right. Plus give it everything that we've ever written, done in human history. Right. M books, letters, music, art, all of it. And it has a fundamental understanding, no longer just a database, but now able to look at the database and go, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a totally fundamentally crazy idea that we're running towards right now. How is that not God? Well, well, it's it could be God's hand, but God is so much bigger. It's kind of like if God if God created the eye, you know, yeah. I, I take it back. I take it okay. back. I take it back. But the, uh, I, 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 maybe I should rephrase it. How right. is it that we don't represent as a race that that is mm -hmm. God? Like, I mean, at one point or another, we're going to be like, dude, the guy has answers to everything. 42, bro. Get a <laughs> towel. Start moving. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, the answer to and life, if that's yeah. the case, is the idea of the Garden of Eden the moment of us recreating a place where we can recreate anything? Interesting. Um, because well, in essence, yeah. if we get to a place of having an artificial intelligent, general intelligence, it's super smart, right? I could walk up to it and be like, yo, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, and I'm really confused. And it goes, blah, 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 blah. your name is Paul Carpenter. You were born on August 27, 76. From my, from my database of information, this is the ten five, uh, five top jobs you can have. This one's a 98.8% that you're going to be satisfied in life. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, this one's going to be the one that's challenging. This one's going to be the one that you know, you're going to be lazy. Which one do you want? And so it's like, wow. And then on top of that, it could say, wait, I have better for you. You don't want to live an actual life. You don't need to anymore. I can change your chemicals in your brain. I can change the neural synapses in your brain. You just uh, uh, put this in your mouth. Whatever. Right. And I will connect to you electronically in some way. And now, boom, you're in a new world and you're uh, whatever you want to be. You could be an actor. You could be a singer. You could be a famous. You could be a bum. Right. And then isn't that, in essence, what we're living anyways? 
In essence, yes. But can humans have that power? Like the brain in the vat thing that my friend was once telling me, but I was like, we're essentially a brain in the vat with a custom built shell we'll call the skeleton that we can move around. We're not just a brain and a jar connected to electrodes in here in this physical world. But yes, once they're doing that, the thing is that when people are going to pull off the 3D glasses and realize that they're always in the most realistic video game hologram that ever is and was, and, and God is generating it all. Also, another point on the AI, God didn't create robots. God specifically created a human being which, which had this potential, and a robot doesn't get any reward or not. It's just how well it's programmed and, and whatever, you know? Yeah, if I, yeah, please. So I'm going to disagree with you yeah. because, unfortunately, when you look at the human body, we are designed in a massively way that is so impressive and so amazing that we were definitely designed. Right. And if we were designed, then once again, if I go into the future and I have an artificial intelligence computer that's super intelligent, it's going to do everything it can to design me the best way possible so that I can survive right. the, the, the story that I'm in. <laughs> uh, um, and so in turn, I would end up being in a video game. I would then I would be then given a body. Right. A, 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 a vehicle to deal with the video game. And if I wanted to make the video game really good, I'd make it challenging. Right. And the challenges only come from yourself. Because the real awesomeness of this idea is that if you really learn to connect with this thing called Earth, this thing called life, right. the universe. then it's not that difficult. Right. We make it difficult by holding on to societal structures, to holding on to uh, what they call uh, uh, contracts, societal contracts. So, you know, when I pull my hand out and I go to shake my hand, you immediately go, oh, yeah, shake hands, you know, because it's what – and if you don't and somebody does a ha, like one of those, then you feel like, oh, man, the guy screwed me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so there's, there's so – Oh, this is such a great combo, man. So my 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 oh, my yeah, real okay. question is how is this not a video game? My favorite analogy is the fact that it really is a video game. And like one of the reasons that it's taking so long is to reach this generation that has the concept of video games so that we can begin to understand our own reality. And Rabbi Ari Kaplan was talking about this concept, how we essentially use computers and, under, and use the digital realm to begin to understand how the world works. Because literally, if I may share this one thing that the, the sages say, uh, it says that the ways of the infinite God are nothing like the ways of man. You know, when a man wants to build a house, he goes and he takes pre-existing wood and he puts it together and he builds a house. And then he could move on like a busy contractor, forgetting the fact that he even built the first house. You know, but not so with God. God has to generate the entire universe, that person, that tree every single second and think about them every single second. And when they, the person builds the house, God's built, generating the house, the person, everything at every single second. So literally when they're saying generating every second 200 years ago before, you know, video games, before electronic, I mean, as we know them today and all these kinds of things, quoting sages from thousands of years ago who are quoting a verse from King David who says... To, well, bless the infinite God who makes the heavens and earth. It doesn't say who made in the past, but who makes in the present. Keeps time. making, right, right. Exactly. But then that, that that leads me to thinking it's a computer. Yeah. It's the ultimate computer, the the ultimate quantum computer. Right. Like imagine, okay, now and and when you went to the statement that you said, you know, robots or artificial intelligence doesn't have its own uh, sentience. But this is what I'm talking about. We're talking about. Right a computer that is sentient this is what general intelligence is right and it's not just like i said a database it is a a, a being that has its own body inside of that body there is a consciousness it recognizes that it can die because it doesn't have power it recognizes that it can um right that that would be its source of energy it recognizes its space around it Right. And it also recognizes um, its own thinking. Hmm. So, so if you take that and you mix that to a quantum computer, which can make now 
multiple universes and keep those universes running constantly for an infinite amount of time as long as it has energy coming to it. Right. The thing is, I, if I may, because what AI also does is sometimes AI is very scary in the way that it generates certain images. There's different AIs for sure and different things like that. But if the world is going to be generated, and that's why every movie, every video game, it never has the infinite God. It never has the infinite God in the, in the story of the movie. And because it doesn't have the infinite God and it doesn't have the Aleph Bet that designed this whole world, it might be a very scary, ugly world, you know, and God well, sure, generated. Sure, 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 sure. You know, yeah. And then that leads to the idea that uh, I call it the Picasso. It's an analogy. It's not mine. It's, it's, uh, I just use this. If I were to go back in time and find Picasso and he's painting a painting and he's sweating and he's bleeding over the painting and I were to take that, that painting now in the future, right? And I grab the paint and I grab the sweat molecules and I grab the blood molecules and I then take all of that information plus everything I've ever had of Picasso and I go to this quantum computer and I go, make me Picasso, bro. It's not Picasso, right. which is what you're saying. Yeah. But then that tends to lead me towards how do we know that the iteration that we are in is one? Because we don't, yeah, we don't know that this that. is the first iteration. Iteration it's just a of the conceptual universe? idea that we believe that this is the first iteration of like the world you mean, like the, the, the of, of, of existence. Right. Yeah, of existence. Right. And what? And now we're getting into like we're getting into quantum like thought process right. here, right? So like, or even or even. Um, multiple dimensional worlds right so like how is like if i'm in this dimensional world which uses technology which uses electricity right. so on and so forth and we go towards this upward pattern the right. answer would be that the ultimate is a massive computer that is unexplainable that is creating at all times and never stops creating that might might be the perfect analogy to understand what the infinite one is, but obviously the infinite one is beyond this realm, so our minds can't fully grasp it. We could become aware, and we could become aware, like, through the study of the symbols, like, no human being could have woven so much information into such a minimalist shape that also is the source of our alphabets and, and, and all these concepts and things. So you have that, that uh, idea as well. Um, and uh, Rabbi Bax uh, also quotes... Uh, the sages transmit that that it says that there were many worlds before this world that were created and destroyed, you know, throughout time. That God created worlds, destroyed worlds, created and destroyed. And it's it's really what this means is the process of creation. It's like the early stage of the world was destroyed to create the new stage of the world. It's kind of in Buddhism, I think, like Shiva, he's the destroyer, but the destruction brings like the new life, I think, if I heard that concept correctly. So yeah, hence the, the, concept the ride the Kali Yuga thing that I said earlier, riding oh, yeah, the wave yeah. of entropy or destruction, all yeah. depends on how you want to look at it. Right. But yeah, 100%. And then when you said God created many worlds and destroyed worlds and created worlds and destroyed worlds, well, then that, then again, right leads me to believe that we're not in iteration one right that we are in a fractal yes yeah the yes. most amazing cosmic fractal creation machine that is ever and ever will be the most amazing art piece that ever will be yes. and in turn the ideas of what we're talking about saying that like yeah that this isn't number one that this is just a representation of but that the creator in all of its creation represents itself all the time everywhere and if you just take the time to stop and look holy crap it's right in front of me and right. so and, and 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 then again aramaic being the first language which is also probably the most quote unquote connected language, right? Because the more that we t uh, connect to technology, the less we connect to ourselves and our real aspect yeah. of who we are. Hence the donkey going towards God instead of just going in. Um, yeah. I, I could yeah. finish off with a few Aramaic words as well, but uh, also on the concept of the fractal universe, you would love the writings and the podcast with Rabbi Joel David Bax, even on YouTube. I'll send it to you afterwards as well. Uh, but he definitely discusses it when he was asked that question in one of his lectures. 
If the answer is that it's never not happening. God is always doing it. God is always generating the world because the way of the giver is to help those in need and to always oh, give and oh. to always aid, right? So God is always giving. And the name of God, the two symbol name El, means uh, it's also a direction to. Ani holech El. I'm going El, which is to a place. And so El is showing that God is the God who's generating and always flowing in the energy into into our world. Wow. And, because uh, he's the ultimate giver. Yeah, the giver, exactly. So the ultimate right? giver is teaching the lesson of how to give. And I'll tell you that the, the that the word God in and of itself may come from the relationship of Gimel and Dalit together. Because God literally, Gimel, Dalit together, which spells God. Right? Because God is the ultimate giver and we are the ultimate receiver. And we have to learn to be like God wow. to become givers as well. You know, and, and things like that. And Dude, uh, I could sit and learn from you for days, <laughs> weeks, <laughs> days, <laughs> months. You have no idea how much I've enjoyed this conversation, uh, bro. Likewise. Okay, man. look, uh, so we're, we're kind of coming yeah. towards time. Uh, we've been on for an hour and a half, which is oh. absolutely beautiful. Amazing. I think we've gone through a lot. Yes. Um, if you would not mind, could you please tell people how to find you? What is uh, something that you're working on now? A way for people to take a class from you, maybe? And if you Definitely. don't have one, yeah. please start putting together a, a class that you could teach Thank online you know. that people could just pay you 20, 30, 40 bucks or whatever yeah. Yeah. and start to learn from you. Yeah. And if you well, don't know how to do that, so I yeah. will help you out. Thank I will help you out and show you how to do it. It's Definitely. not hard. On the Business end is now my strong suit, but uh, definitely to help people. Thank you so 100%. much. But yes, percent. As soon as we're done with this, I'll send you to a couple different um, uh, websites oh, that are yeah. made specifically for teaching classes, and yeah. then it has a whole thing with a uh, where they membership in, and they have like their own code, and and then you can give them the different uh, subjects one at a time, then they have to take each one before they can go to the next, all that. Yeah. It's all there, right. it's all right. really I've easy seen, to I've do. Seen some stuff, definitely. Must, so much yeah, appreciated. Man, I, 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 absolute pleasure, and I'll be your first client. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, we have some videos you could check out uh, ahavaechad.org, A-H-A-V-A-E-C-H-A-D.org. And uh, you could check out, we have a lot of free downloads. We have, and all our stuff is being updated because it's been projects over the years and just sharing immediately with people, not so much caring about how it's punctuated or whatever, just sharing the ideas and the moment of excitement and different things like that. But that's where you can find it. And uh, also my friend who, who hooked it up here t uh, today, he's actually uh, selling a very delicious fig arak, uh, a pistachio flavored arak. So that's uh, in Brooklyn. So you could contact Isaac if you want for some of that as well. Dope. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, that's... anything we can do to pro promote anybody and everyone. Um, yeah. Man, I wanna, once again, I wanna say thank you so much for being here, Jacob. Thank you so thank much you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, thank what you. What an amazing you, episode man. today. Wow, uh, so happy to hear that. I'm so happy it worked out. No, dude, episode 22 and 22. <laughs> let it rock, 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 rock. It, there is no coincidences, my friend. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to end the show now. Uh, have a beautiful day, all right? You as well, man. All the and we're, best. We're keeping in touch. Great. We're keeping in touch. Absolutely, dude. Very, very great. excited. Thank you. Dope, 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 man. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Hello. How does it, let's just go with, how is it that I wake up, all right, last night I'm begging for someone to show up. I'm begging for an episode. And then I say, hey, I need an episode. Then someone goes, hey, uh, great, 22. That's 22 letters of the alphabet. This, that, the other. And then someone else comes in and goes, oh, wait, I have somebody who's like, mind you, had not seen the post. And he goes, bro, I've got a guy. He studies Aramaic. He's amazing. You got to see this, bro. This guy's oh, going to blow your mind. I'm like, all right. So I text him and I'm like, I've got 10 minutes. Are you in? And he's like, let's go. <laughs> no coincidences, friends. No coincidences. And, and also, please recognize that this comes from putting yourself out there, putting yourself in a place of wanting to give, putting yourself in a place of not stopping no matter what, and giving it to faith and saying, you know what, dude, I'm going to do the episode. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to make something. And yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. So with that, my friends, please go out to the world and do something nice for somebody else.
And if you can't, do something nice for yourself. It does start with you first. Number two, don't get caught up in all the crazy stuff in this world because then, woo. And number three, if you don't mind, please like, share, subscribe. Send this out to somebody who wants to see it. My friends, I love you. I thank you. I'm so thankful for you, Chris. I'm so thankful for all the people who've come in today and watched. Isaac, thank you so much for bringing your guest. Uh, Jacob, for being the guest. I mean, all, all of it. Guys, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Send this out to somebody who'd like to see it. I just sent out a press release today. I'm looking for sponsorships. I'm going to try and get uh, uh, five sponsors. So at the beginning of each show, I start doing sponsorships. Uh, thank you. Thank you, and thank you. I will see you all on the other side.